Well, this is still a yikes. So in today's episode, we are going to fix this, but I feel like we could do more. So we might add a wildlife overpass at the end as well. And if you like that we're revisiting this, please hit the like button. And if you were fine with the way it was before, hit the like button for that too. And down in the comments, let me know how you feel. Without any further ado, let's just jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Clearwater County, and we are back here. Yes, we are at Phil's Folly, the monstrosity, the thing that should have never been built. I plopped in a parklo from the workshop into this location, and here's the thing about workshop interchanges generally. They're great, but the conditions have to be ideal. So this was not an ideal condition for a workshop interchange, and I thought I could just use my sheer force of will to make it happen, and it didn't work. And if we look at our terrain, this is why. This is a really challenging spot to build a transportation network generally. So to be able to plop an interchange in here was just absolutely crazy. But I think I have an idea about what we can do to make this work. And after giving it some thought, I think I had the perfect solution for this area. We're gonna create an offset single point urban interchange or spooing about. It's gonna be based upon this one here in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. The great thing about this particular interchange is it works well in a constrained environment. What's not so great about it is that it's very expensive. Look at all those bridge spans. That's crazy, but we're going to do it anyway. Before we can jump in and do that, though, we've got to get rid of this mess. And I thought about the best way to do this. You know, you might think I just delete this and start building, but we modified the river and I'm not super excited about that. So I think we need to bring our old interchange back. Ah, it's like magic. <laughs> there it is again. There are a couple of things that I maybe didn't get quite right, but I used Move It to just import this back in. And the main reason I wanted to do this isn't because I want to preserve bridges or anything. It's just that I want to change the terrain and try to make it look a little bit more similar to the way it looked in the past. So I'm going to grab the brush size, take it up a bit, and we're going to use our slope terrain tool on the side of the river here to try to move it back to where it used to be. And this isn't completely perfect, but it's a little more close to what we had before. We'll do a little bit more work to try to make this feel a bit more like it used to, but this is a good starting point. The other reason I wanted to do this is I think that I actually inappropriately placed the side road. I should have switched the sides of the road. I ended up building this way towards the river and I probably should have built into the hill. So the first thing that I want to do is get rid of the things that I know we're not going to need. So I got rid of this ramp right here. We're going to get rid of this little center divider. And I think we're going to try to keep this running as best we can. I'm also going to pull this back. And again, I said we're going to be switching sides of the road. I'm going to eliminate this all the way back to here. So what that means essentially is that this was the northernmost segment of road. This will now be the southernmost segment of road. So we're going to switch that here as well. Now we're in a pretty good place there. Nice starting point. Let's get rid of some of the intersection marking and nodes that we had from the past. So to begin, I want to think about getting this bridge across here correct. So I'm going to use our network multi-tool to clone this little segment of road on the opposite side that we had it before. So we will go through and just parallel this and I'm going to set this to be a ground level segment. And then again, we use 30 meters as our guide before we're going to do that again. We'll go with an approximate 14 unit bridge that gives us our node right in the center, which is what I was hoping for. And then right off the bat, let's focus on some of our heights. And now I'm going to go ground level and we'll go about four units. And now I want to create this roundabout. I'm going to grab a moderate brush strength and come down kind of in between these two roads and level the terrain. So we'll be cutting in certain areas and filling in the others. And I want to make this big enough to be able to fit a roundabout that is approximately 16 units across in this location. Let's drop this down to its terrain height. And I could use a roundabout tool, but I know that I can just do this quickly enough on my own. I think this is going to be big enough that I can have a whole bunch of ramps coming off from here and not have node conflicts, but still small enough that it's fairly compact and I'm not overdoing it with the grading. I'm also going to add the crosses through here to keep things consistent. 
Otherwise, from time to time, you can see some things break in your roundabout. When you put in some of your ramps, you could see that the, the roundabout actually deform. Don't want that to happen. Now I want to connect up our little segments here, and we are going to use the network multi-tool for that. We'll go ahead and use our create connection mode, select our two ends, and then I want these to be a larger angle. Maybe we'll go 60 degrees there, and then we'll back this out. And then to get this right, we are going to use our create parallel mode tool. So just pop it on through here again, tabbing over, going up 30 units again. And then we'll need to union these nodes together. Perfect. And that looks absolutely horrendous. <laughs> but we, we know how to fix this. We'll just go ahead and use move it. And then we'll slope the terrain in between here. So I wanted to make sure that the nodes on either highway were the same so that when I sloped this, they would be exactly the same too. And now I can grab a larger brush strength, come up here, right mouse click down at the bottom, left click and just pull this up and get rid of the center wonkiness. The other bonus is I went way too wide on the carve here on the highway. And now that I've done this, you can start to see that I can pull our mountains and uh, everything closer to the highway in the future. Editor Phil here, and there is one issue with what I've done. There is no way for wildlife to get across from one side of the highway to the other. So Planner Duck brought up this excellent idea of creating a wildlife crossing across the highway, and I absolutely want to do that. So stay tuned till after the city tour, which is when we're going to build that. Now let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this interchange and why you might use it. So the pros are that you don't use up a lot of right away and you can put these in constrained environments. And the cons are that you have a lot of bridges. So these sorts of interchanges are incredibly expensive. So we're gonna be offsetting this. So if you were to leave the highway, you're gonna come over here and then cross a bridge to get on this side. So that's one bridge here, another one here, and another one over here. And they're long. So that's the other feature, I guess you could call it that, of these sorts of interchanges. So that's why you, this isn't appropriate for everywhere, but we've got a really constrained environment. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> so we're gonna try to do everything in one swoop. So let's go ahead and we'll take this into unmodded normal road placement mode. We're gonna change this at the end anyway. And I just wanna be able to cross the highway here and then we'll turn back and I'm gonna try to snap to a guideline. Maybe we'll even make our connection over here first. And you see some weird overlapping stuff. We'll we'll figure that out as as the as we build this. Let's start out by building the highway itself so we can start getting each ramp correct as we're building. And ideally we wouldn't have much bridging outside of the actual place that we're crossing the highway. So I'm gonna set these to elevate here. We're probably gonna need to change this node to put that right in the center of the highway. Now you can see that everything's a little bit off here and I want this to fit nicely. Wow, that's also really high. So we're gonna do a lot of modifications to this location. I want to grab a node and add one right in the center here so that we get a pillar. And then I will remove this node we're gonna add another node right here because this is way too close. And then I'll remove this node, which will turn this into a ground level segment. We'll upgrade that to be a bridge. And now you see that we've got our pillar there. This is way higher than I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna use move it, the height of realism, control H this to the roundabout, and then we can slope this nicely. Now this is beneficial for us for a couple of reasons. Obviously this is way too high. So we'll control H, both of these down and that should put us in a good place with our bridge that height is pretty darn good we could probably go a little bit higher and when i say that we could go higher here i was really using the lights as the guide and now you can see that the, the, the highway clears the lights which means that any any vehicle will as well now i want to slope this down to the highway and we're at a six percent grade which is not great so i'm going to drop this down just a bit and truthfully, actually, we'll slope from this center point and that'll get us to five. And I think we're still OK with our highway. And if we're not, it's fine. We can always drop the highway down a little bit, but I think that's pretty darn good. This area is looking a little messy. Got to go home to node controller, back this up, use this right here, make end straight, control shift C. Looks OK. We've got some node issues here. 
So I think that if we get rid of this node, we're probably going to be in a better spot. And I got rid of this other node and it's going to allow us to line these up nicely. And when we go in after the fact, we're going to do a whole bunch of intersection marking. And I think it's going to ultimately result in us having some nicer uh, marking over here. And I switched this one and made it a middle so that uh, the it, we didn't have that weird flat spot here. So in general, I think that's looking pretty darn good. So this particular ramp will go down and meet with this highway heading out of the region. And for these, I just like to find a nice place to line up. And we'll just send that down right here. And I'm very curious about our slopes through here. So I'm just going to double check these. 3.8 is actually pretty outstanding. We are going to do something I haven't done very often in this build. We're going to make that a tunnel. So I'm going to pop through here. The great thing, this is uh, the North American freeway set, is the tunnels are absolutely outstanding. So I'm going to upgrade this road here to be a tunnel. And if we're going to do that, I think I've actually got to pull this out a little further because I'm, I'm concerned that the tunnel is going to surprise motorists that are coming in here and they're going to come through and bam, there's a car. So we're not going to do that. All right, here's our new attempt, <laughs> our next attempt, and then we'll tunnel a portion of this. And then we're going to blast this seg segment away. And that will be so that folks who are coming around this corner can see the cars that are merging. And I think that we're also going to have to have a dedicated merging lane over here to, again, prevent some of uh, what, what could be a pretty dangerous merge onto the highway here. So we'll go upgrade this to three lanes. And then we've got to be careful here with the way that we're shifting this. So I'm going to take this highway and I'm holding down shift in node controller. We're going to take this corner and align it with this one. So it seems like a merge and then we'll pull this way, way back. And then for this, if we wanted this to feel a bit more natural, the other thing that we could do would be to pull this in. I'm going to hold down alt to get this turn to be a bit better as well. And maybe we'll even go in here and use our arrange at line mode. Yeah, that is considerably better. Okay, I think I'm going to back it out to here. Now we've at least got a little bit of space where we're not going to deal with a bunch of sight line issues. So then, then we'll take this down. There we go. And I've got some TMPE settings and a bunch of intersection marking that I'd like to do, but I'm going to wait till the entire interchange is done. So we'll just move on to the rest of the legs of our interchange first. I'm going to work around here clockwise. And what we're going to do now is back this out, get our contours back on. And I want the roundabout to join up approximately right here. So I will grab our top height here and slope up. And I'm going to want to come right in the middle of that power line, of course. And now I just want to connect these up. So we'll come around here and use our curved road tool to make a nice connection through here. And now I'm going to use my free form tool. I'll select this node. That's the one that was four away and find a nice angle into the roundabout. And we're going to do that on either side. And then we can't forget to reverse this and then hit, hit it up with node controller. So this node right here looks pretty rough and it's easy enough to fix this. First of all, we're going to take this height here. And I want to raise this up to the roundabout so that we're pretty smooth through there. And then we can just hit this with move it mod and just slightly shake that over. And then I'm going to upgrade through here as well. And now things look a little bit better through here. So we can upgrade these portions of the ramps to the roundabout. And this looks kind of strange. I'm going to control H this node to here to make it look a bit more natural. We will have to slope this, but we slope from here instead. And it's a 4.3. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty darn good. So we're going to be fine there. And I, I did decide to modify the top here a bit. So one of the issues I was having is that you were seeing the top of the tunnel through here. So that wasn't necessarily the most realistic looking thing in the world. I don't know that there's a ton I can do to make this really, really, really look good. But I could take my brush strength way, way down and try to pull a, t a higher height and try to make this look a little bit more natural and then hit this with our softened terrain so it doesn't look like a flat top. I can I can live with that. So there we go. Let's get working on this next side. And to, before we do that, I think we've got to fix this. 
We'll do the exact same thing we did before. We've got our contours on. We'll go into Network Multi-Tool and use our Create Connection Mode. And then we parallel this over as well. And now we've got a couple of weird things with the power line here. And I think we're going to rethink this right away because I want to disconnect this. We're going to have ramps going through here and doing lots of crazy things. So we have this line coming up near Johnson aggregates as it is. So what I'd like to do is grab this and we're going to reorient this and send it over the bridge the other way. And then we'll run this right along the side here. And I'm going to turn off Anarchy because I don't want the pillars to be in the middle of the roads. And I'm not sure that this is our final location for that power line, but it is going to work for us right now. And it gave us an opportunity to reconnect this line as well. Let's get started on our next ramp. I'm going to grab the rural roads again. And this is going to come up along here. I think that we'll just pop this up 40 meters and we'll just cut across here. But I think that's about where we want to be. And for this one, again, we're going to find that middle node and then swoop on over. And then for the other one, oh, we lost our middle node. So this is exactly why you want to make sure you don't get rid of your crosses too soon. Because there's a chance that I break the node here inadvertently. So I'll line up nicely here. We can have a fairly short bridge across the railroad. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> it looked like a short bridge without the terrain on but it's still going to be a fairly significant bridge and then we'll just follow our terrain here and meet up with the side of the highway and then over here we're going to do the same thing let's get this bridge created so i'm going to add nodes to shorten this up remove the nodes that we don't want and then again go and grab our ramp over here elevate this right across the center and now I want to do some sloping. And the first way I want to do this is I just want to go through here all the way back and see what our, I mean, that's awesome. A 2.8% grade through here is just outstanding. And then we'll node controller this to make this look better. And now the thing that I'm the most concerned about, the slopes through here. So let's just see what we get. 2.8. Wow. <laughs> oh, never mind. So I'm going to pop this up and now I've grabbed these both and made them the same height. So now I can select these both and drop them down using move it. And I think that that's acceptable there. So now we'll control H this and the pillars actually in a pretty outstanding location. The bigger concern is this one. And now I don't think we can see into the upside down. Let's go ahead and slope this. So we'll slope this from here to here, 1.1, that's not bad. And then we'll slope from here to here. Now this is a 5.2, we're gonna live with that. It is the interstate. This is a mountainous area. And again, we can have six, so it should be fine here. And I'm gonna slope this so that we don't have that flat spot there. And now we need to fix our lanes here. And I've got this thing paused. I don't know why, I didn't need to do that. And this thing is rip roaring and ready to go with the exception of this small segment here. Let's upgrade this. And again, ground segment here because we don't want to bridge any more than we have to. And in fact, we'll pull this node over, even though we're reusing our bridge, it's fine. We'll, uh, we'll take a couple of liberties. And then I want to again, go ahead and fix our nodes and look at how slow they're moving through that. That tells me that something is off, so I may need to adjust. All right, I had to drop the height of this because I want the roundabout and the roads coming into it to be fairly flat so you're not being surprised at the roundabout. And it looks like we are okay technically on the highway and the interstate, but I really don't like technically. So we're gonna drop it down a bit here and now I'm gonna slope this out. Try to make it so that we can't tell that I just did some craziness. There we go. And we should probably do the same thing over here because now there's a bump. I don't love this angle. I'm curious if we can soften that at all. And the main reason for that is it just felt like that was way too sharp for the interstate. Now, there are lots of places like this that I talked about adding acceleration and deceleration ramps. So all I'm talking about there is going three lanes before you get to these. 
So it doesn't have to be a long bunch of highway, but this is a place where you can merge on and off. So now that I've upgraded those node controllers where all the magic happens here, I wanna take this end right here and line this up with this highway. And then over here, we're gonna do the exact same thing line this end up with the existing highway and what that does is give the appearance of a lane beginning and over here it makes it seem as though a lane is ending so now i've marked these two areas the way that i want them to be marked i'm going fairly simplistic we just have a yellow or a white line on the inside meeting up here takes us and shows that there's this merge lane right here and then over here we neck that down I don't want to do this again though. So in node controller, I'm copying it. I'm going to hop in here and copy this. So that is copy markings or control shift C. And then you come here and you can control shift V and it'll add these in and it'll look crazy. You got to rotate it around. So I'm turning this clockwise and it still didn't work. So what I can do is invert this since it's the other side of the highway and look at that. It's perfect. And then we hit enter or apply and we're good to go. I'm going to do this across the highway in between this area and the end of our interchange and we'll be right back. All right, we've got these all marked up and they're looking good. And now I want to focus a little bit on this hillside while we're over here. Let's try to repair this. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to just try to grab this height here and pull it in and just kind of keep grabbing heights and pulling it towards the highway. And then I'm going to not worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> because there's nothing I can do to make it perfect. But I think that it's perfectly acceptable the way it looks. That, that, like that looks fine. It looks like we blasted to make this happen. And before we leave this area, I am going to carve a little bit more into the hillside and give the ramp a little bit more space. I think it'll make it look a little bit better. It won't tear uh, visually, which will just make this whole thing look a lot more polished. Now I want to think a bit about TMPE on the highway before we move over to our roundabout. And I just got to come through here and control S these into place just so that folks are staying in their lanes and then fixing stuff like this. I hate this <laughs> where rather than, uh, whoa, you're having a good time. Uh, rather than staying in the lane and merging in, zippering in like you're supposed to, TMPE has that middle lane merge into the left lane and towards the middle, the median. I don't really understand why it does that, but it is what it does. So I'll fix that up and down the highway. Very nice. And now I think it's just about time that we go and configure our roundabout. I think with roundabouts, you just got to keep it simple. Rather than overly complicating this, I'm going to just keep it super, super duper simple. So this is going to be an interesting one. So I want a straight line here, solid straight white line here. Same thing here. Actually, this one could be yellow. Oh, we do our outside yellow line. And then I'm going to change the endpoints. So I'm saying that this is one of our start points and this is the other one. And then I need to modify this other line here so you can see which one you're working with. And I'm going to I want this dashed line to continue at the roundabout. So I'll select it here. And I want it to end here. And then we've got this other segment. So we just add a rule and I'm holding down shift to make a solid line. So it's not 100% perfect. And truthfully, maybe we just get rid of that dashed line there. Yeah, I think I like that better. And then just like earlier on the highway, I'm going to copy and paste this throughout the different nodes on the roundabout. We'll be right back. All right. And to make this seem like it's new, we're just going to get rid of all the landscaping around it because that is exactly what would happen. And then I'll add a bit around the freeway. Then the other place is on top of this. I really want that to feel natural. So the places where I've moved power lines or things of that nature, we're absolutely going to come through and hit that up with a bit of landscaping. You know, and after all of that ranting about how we need to be judicious with our landscaping, I ended up adding a bunch anyway. Here's the thing. I never did see a tree that I didn't want to plant. So <laughs> here we go. And everything seems normal right now, but it's not. I'm going to save you from what I was about to put you through, which was going through and trying to troubleshoot this roundabout. And now that I know what was wrong, I will tell you. Basically, I went through here and I added a whole bunch of lane connectors that didn't need to be there. And you always got to come back through and double check and look at your routes 
And I, when I click here, that's working. Folks only really want to go that way. That's fine. Right here, there are multiple routes going this way. This one, we have people going to both Johnson Aggregates and Johnson Creek. Both of these are working and this one's doing nothing. And this drove me bonkers. So I wanted to know why people weren't using this. And I went, I brown leveled this. I did a whole bunch of stuff. I actually changed where this is coming in at the roundabout. This was further back. I moved it this way and nothing worked. I saw one truck use this ever. And here's why. There's no reason for anyone to use this. So if they're coming from Johnson Creek, why wouldn't they just hop on the highway here to leave town? Why would they come up here and wiggle their way around the roundabout? I guess you can make a case that someone from Johnson Aggregates might want to come through here, but that clearly is just not a movement that is occurring. Ah, <laughs> make a liar out of me. It is occurring, but not often. So that is where we're getting the truck, the intermittent truck from time to time. You got to remember, there's not much up here. It's really Johnson Aggregates. And then we've got our cargo train station. And then you're looking at Otter Lake, but really, is this the best way to get on the highway or would you potentially come this way? I, I'm not sure, but either way, this is working. And then lastly, before we move on, I wanted to point out a couple of fixes I made off camera. This is probably one of the more significant ones. We had a single lane coming through here. I think it was a lane mathematics fixation in this particular spot where I had it splitting off one here, one here. So we fixed that same thing over here. And then there was something that nobody noticed, or at least I didn't see it in the comments. And that is that down here, way back here, I had a segment of road that was bi-directional. So I've replaced this and now we have the single direction roadway over here. So we are in a pretty good place. So before we move on to building our wildlife overpass, I do wanna have a brief interchange tour. And as much as that added to the build, I don't think that we are quite done yet. I want to add a wildlife overpass and the credit for this goes to Planner Duck who mentioned it in the Discord server. So the whole point of a wildlife overpass is to allow wildlife for, to pass from one area to another. And these aren't necessarily common everywhere. And I think that one of the reasons I didn't add it to the build is my own personal biases based upon where I live. Though Wisconsin has the fourth most wildlife collisions out of all of the states in the US, we have no wildlife overpasses. So this is something that we should probably get on, but we're not, but I want to add one to this build. So we're gonna look at our contours first. I wanna find a way to cross that isn't gonna require kind of a ridiculous amount of grading, and I wanna cross a fairly flat piece of highway. So when I look at this, there are really two locations that stand out to me. We've got this location right here that we could probably work with. We'd have to do a bit of grading to make it work. And then we've got this location as well, which is right by this bridge. Now I was looking at this diagram from British Columbia, and it looks like they like to combine both overpasses and underpasses to create kind of a complex. So I might follow their lead and place it in this location. I don't want to add any assets to the build, but I do have an idea. We're going to use assets that we currently have to create retaining walls along with some of our surface networks. So let's start out with a tunnel because that's what we're going to add, a tunnel over the road. So we've got two different types of tunnels available to us. We've got this one right here and we've got this one. And I believe that both of these actually came with this map. So when Exy put this together, these were part of the collection. Now I'm gonna use the one on the left, very specific reason. That is, I don't wanna to have to try to cover up this curved area with landscaping. I can figure this one out a little bit. So let's get rid of the curve and then we'll copy this one. And I'm gonna place that right over here. This isn't necessarily the final location of this. 
The main reason is I want to stick some of these blocks in between. So we've got these entryway blocks. I'm not sure of the difference just yet. We'll take a look at both. It looks like it's just the texture. So it doesn't really matter which one we use. We'll go with the first one because it looks like it matches up the most. Now for all of these, I am going to place links in the video description. So if you want to do what I'm doing, you will have the ability. So we're going to need two of these. Place one on either side. And then I want to find a node here. It looks like I have one. Let's back this up just a bit. And I'm going to spread this over ever so slightly. The reason I'm doing that is I want the blocks to naturally fit in between these. There's a kind of a texture for this tunnel entry point. I want to pull this just in front of there on both sides. There we go. That is just about perfect. And over here, I might add another node just so I can completely straighten this through here. So we'll use that. That we'll use the network multi-tool and just add a node right here and a node right here. And then the other thing that I want to do is you can see that there is a light through here. We don't want a light in the middle of our tunnel, at least not like this. So I'm going to use the eyedropper on this segment of tunnel and then I'll go and I'll select the lights. This is network skins and I'm just going to go ahead and say none and then just upgrade that segment right here and this one right here. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that the tunnels aren't quite straight. So we're going to pull this back and try to get everything to line up nice and straight through here. It's going to be really important for us if we're going to make this work. But now that we have different nodes through here, it should be fairly simple to make this happen. There we go. And now we'll just move our nodes over to fit this perfectly right in the center. Now I want to drop these down and you might be inclined to control H these to here. It's not going to work. So what we're going to do is just manually adjust these. In fact, if anything, we'll control H them into each other. There we go. And we have a nice little structure here. So now we need to create the sides for this. And this is going to be how we create kind of a, a realistic look and feel for this. And we used this retaining wall. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did over here. If you recall, we actually have a 32 meter wide surface network. And then we have a network retaining wall. So this retaining wall is our stone retaining wall. And this is a really interesting asset. So first of all, we want to turn off all of our snap tubes because we want maximum flexibility here. And I'm going to grab the side of this and just pull this out a ways. And in fact, I might keep road length on so we can make this really predictable. And we'll bring this out, say, 10 units. And we're going to do the exact same thing on either side. I'm going to do this over here and try to line it up with the exact same location so that kind of the corner of the tunnel entrance and then 10 units again and the same thing over here and now the trick is going to be to get these to line up really nice in the side so i'm selecting the node here and i'm just raising this up and i want this to line up perfectly with the edge of our tunnel And now that we have the inside corners done, we're going to go to the outside and I just want to grab these and lower these down to be flush with the ground at the end. And the exact location here doesn't matter. It just needs to feel natural. You're going to be blending your ground in with this, your, your surface network in at this location. So that's probably the most important thing to consider. All right. Now we're going to try to use our surface networks. So I'm going to grab this 32 meter surface network and this is what we're going to use extensively throughout this. I want to try using the parallel road tool. No, it's not going to work. But what we can do is use our road guidelines. So we'll pop out of that tool. And if I have my road guidelines on, it'll snap really nicely like that. And we'll get the perfect length. Now I'm going to hit M to go in to move it and line this up. Now, if you want this to be a little easier for yourself, you could use a different network. So you could, I mean, you can upgrade this just like it's roads. So you could come through and say, all right, I'm going to use this one right here, this pavement network, and then we'll just upgrade it after the fact. So maybe that's what we'll do. And then I'm just going to try to get this lined up really nicely on the edge. And then we'll come in the back and do the exact same thing. Now, those guidelines are a nice starting pl place. Sometimes it works perfectly and you don't have to do much work. Most of the time, though, I've had to really kind of get finicky and play around. And there you go. You can see how that just blends into the side of the hill. And now I can upgrade that. And when you turn your contours off, it looks it looks like it's actually a part of that surface. So that's what I'm going to repeat on the rest of the sides. You see that there's a little bit of a, 
a strange spot here where you can look underneath it into the upside down. We'll handle that in just a minute, but I'm gonna go around and we will do this on all sides. And with that, we have the sides completely done. I wanna remove some of this landscaping now. You can see it's ducking underground. We do have a solution for that, but let's give ourselves as clean of a palette to work with as we can. And now I want to add the path across here. So we will again select this. And this one, I wanna go beyond. I do not want the road guidelines. I do not want these to clip at all. I want this to be completely separate and unique. We're gonna be adding some nodes through here. I'm gonna control H this to here and it's not gonna work the way I want it to. And for this one, I did convert this to be a different color temporarily. Now I'm gonna go through move it and I only wanna select nodes. I keep selecting these, these buildings. I want this to be right in the center. The nice thing is I know where that is because of the pattern on here. And now I'm gonna raise this up. So that's page up and I just want that to be hidden. So this isn't gonna be perfect just yet. We have gotta add a node to this. So we're gonna add a node right about here at the end and same thing on the other side. And basically these nodes exist so that we can raise the height to be the same as the middle here. And then these nodes we will use to get the ground height. So we'll just lower this down and then I'll pull these other nodes into our centerpiece. And as I see this, we may actually need it to make, oh no, it's fine. So I was thinking that we may need to add another node, but I think we're gonna be okay. And now I think we've got to start playing with the actual terrain heights to get this to look a little bit nicer and go into our landscaping tools, go into our shift terrain tool. And I want to have a really small brush size and I want the strength to be almost nothing. And you basically got to find the, the edge of this and right and left click until it ends up looking good visually. There's a little bit of odd stuff happening right here. You know, I think that we could keep playing with this forever and you certainly could. <laughs> you know, I think there's an unlimited amount of work that could be done here. At a certain point, you've got to cut it off. And I think that that's kind of where I'm at. So I either need to lower this down and I'll be okay with some of the things that are popping up. I think that's actually pretty darn good. We can add landscaping through here to cover some of this up. So I think that that side is probably the trickier one. This side appears to be pretty simple because it looked good right off the bat. So again, we'll take this down to 0.02 or 0.01. Pop this in a couple of times and look at that. You can barely tell where this ends. That is perfect. And then over here, we're just gonna drop this down. We might even just wanna go into our shift terrain tool and just pop this down ourselves and get some of the crazy textures away from the area that we're working. <laughs> oh, I love that. That looks so good. So this is just our start because I think the rest of this is really landscaping and figuring out how to make everything look good with that. So the first thing I want to do though is you see that there's some kind of odd stuff happening here. I'm going to pop in a node controller. Remember, because this is a network, we can change the size of it with node controller. I want to say taking this down to like 87% worked pretty well for me before. And then again, we'll go in to move it. We'll make sure that we're only selecting our nodes and then we can perfectly center that. And now we'll do the exact same thing with these other nodes up here. So I ended up taking these to 96 and you can see that looks pretty darn good. And now with this in place, we need to start thinking about directing our animals to this crossing. So I want to place some sort of fence along here to keep the animals in and then the same thing along here. So the main thing that we're going to need to consider is that there is not actually anything right here. It's a network. So let's say we wanted to use our nature reserve fence right here. First of all, it, it's on a network, so it's going to act all crazy. Even, I have no snap twos on right now and look what it's doing. It's jumping all over the place. So we could make a small piece here and attempt to pull this over, but it is conforming to the terrain. So that is not going to work for us. So what we're going to do is go into our extra filters within find it Two, And I want to go into non terrain conforming. And now what we're going to find is that we only have things that do not conform to the terrain. 
and I think we're gonna use this old farm fence. It's 16 units wide, and this is something that we picked up for farms a million years ago. And what you can see is that this is raising up, which is exactly what we want. So the one thing to keep in mind with this is it's not, it's gonna float. So we can't, we've gotta be really careful about how we use these. We can't go diagonally down the side. We basically have to stop here and switch to another kind of fence. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to direct this right here and we could use our line tool. We could go into fence mode. I think we're gonna avoid line tool though because it's 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 making things pop to the ground. We're gonna have to do a lot of cleanup at the end. I, I'm just, I'm gonna feel much more comfortable doing this myself. And truthfully, these sides are not working well. So we're gonna get rid of the sides here and then we'll hop in to move it and I'm just gonna select these only. So the marquee selection tool is probably the easiest way to accomplish this. So we'll select props only and turn picker on and then select the picker button. And now we only have those fences. So I can highlight all of these and it looks like this one shifted over a bit. We'll move that and then control C, control V and there we go. Now I do want there to be terrain conforming fences, so we are going to select that as well. We might even go with a wire fence or something like that. And for this one, because it is terrain conforming, I'm a little more okay with using the prop line tool. And I'm gonna run this along the side of the road for a little ways. So we're just trying to get all of these animals to know that this is the right location. And look at that, that is floating like crazy. So we're just gonna bring these down inside and move it. There we go. And you might have noticed I overshot it over here. And the main reason for that is we're going to go in to move it and just slide this fence into the other one. Now we've got to think about the landscaping. I think the trick is just to try to cover this up. Now on these sorts of bridges, there is a bit of landscaping. We want to direct all of the focus away from the road if we can. So we're going to go with some lower bushes along the outside. Now we're gonna to need to turn on anarchy for this, but we also need to make sure that tree snapping is on. So tree snapping is the entire reason that we wanted to use these pieces underneath here. Cause you can see, I can snap this onto the side of here. Now here's the funny thing. I get to the networks and because you can now change the network to have trees on it, all of these networks are difficult to work with. All of that said, we can make this work. So what we're gonna do is just place a bunch of these and then we'll use move it to move them onto our network pieces. And I actually don't want these to be standing up like that. It just seemed like a good asset to work with. So we're gonna select all of these and then just page down. And then I'll control H these all to one of these so that they're at the same height. And now they look like bushes or grasses that are kind of directing some of this. We will add a couple of trees too, but we want to think about the structural integrity of this bridge and you wouldn't want it to be too much. I just want to really direct the eyes of the animals away from the road. And then I want to add some large tufts of grass through here. So I'm going to try to find the widest custom ones that we have available. And it might be some of the savanna grass. So I'm going to add in some savanna grass. And then again, move it's where the magic happens. This time around, I'm gonna grab this, control C it, and then just add a couple through here. And these are particularly nice in areas where maybe you were struggling to hide things. Like look at that now, now that's gone. We'll do the exact same thing here and you can see it's floating. Don't worry about that, we will cover this. So now I'm selecting that individual grass and we're just lowering it down. And I saw a couple of these nice flowers uh, in our in our in our set, so I'm gonna move some of those over here as well. And I'm basically watching for when these disappear and trying to pull them up. Now this is a pretty rough location. You can see that we're not really hiding things as I might have liked to. So again, more grass. <laughs> And I would say just experiment, pull different things through and try different things. And then you can always modify things after the fact as well. 
So I'm going to go through and just layer some of these grasses through here, and then we will add some trees. Uh, and after a bit of finagling around, here we are. And I absolutely adore the result. This has been one of my favorite builds, but this is one that I hadn't considered. And I really want to thank Planner Duck for encouraging me to put this together because it's just, this has been a really fun one. And it really, this feels unique and special. So what I had to do is go through and take a look at each and every uh, thing that I plopped to make sure it wasn't floating. That didn't really take a lot of a lot of work it didn't take that much time but it really did elevate the look of this and again on the bridge tree snapping has to be on if you want things to clip to the to this asset right here if you don't have that it'll go right to the road uh, but with that on it makes it really easy to place a bunch of bushes through here place a bunch of vegetation and place these decals and the end result man it is stunning absolutely one of my favorite builds in clearwater county and here's what it looked like before and here's what it looks like now and it's just outstanding just outstanding and i really hope that you've enjoyed this build if you did please hit the like button if you are not subscribed to the channel please consider doing so and i really can't wait to see you in the next one thank you so much for joining me today it really is a privilege to bring these videos to you and i appreciate your time take care bye bye